Hey guys, this video is going to be an introduction to mitochondrial inheritance. Uh, why this is important is because there are some uh, significant clinical findings which are um, explained by this, this uh, style of inheritance, um, which kind of bucks off the Mendelian style of inheritance where you have two different parents uh, mixing their genes into a singular genotype. And then out of that genotype, you have a phenotype win out. Uh, check out one of our videos about genotype versus phenotype. If you have any questions about that? what those terms mean. Um, in this style, it follows the idea that there are some traits in us that uh, we get solely from our mitochondrial DNA. So not from, uh, not from the DNA of, um, that's found in all cells or all, all uh, in our nuclei. Rather, it's only found in our mitochondria. And one interesting thing is that we only receive mitochondria from our mothers. I mean, all the mitochondria that you have in your body um, came from just your mom. Now, as you know, a sperm mixes with an ovum to produce an offspring. Um, the sperm is very small in comparison to the ovum, and only the ovum is large enough to contain its own mitochondria, to be its own uh, self-supporting cell. So that is why um, traits that follow mitochondrial inheritance can only be passed on from mother to child and not from father to child, because the father... Uh, contributes no mitochondria to the offspring. So you might see a, a pedigree like this, where if a father is affected, none of his children, none of his offspring will be affected because all of their mitochondria came from their mother, who in this part of this pedigree is unaffected. However, if you look over here on the opposite side, this mother is affected while this father is unaffected, and all of the children, all of the offspring, are affected. That's because they all got their mitochondria only from their mother. Excuse me. Um, and then down here, this this later generation, it's, it's very much the same picture where you had an affected mother, an unaffected father, and they combined and all of the offspring are affected because the mitochondria only come from the mothers, not from the fathers. So mitochondrial inheritance, it does not matter whether the father's effect or not, only if the mother is. And if the mother is, typically all the children um, can potentially have that trait. Not always, but usually they do. Um, when you're trying to figure out a pedigree that looks like this, um, you might get tripped up and think this is autosomal dominant because it's present at every generation. Um, it's very common. You know, it's not a very rare trait, like you might see with an autosomal or recessive pedigree. However, the big tip-off here is the fathers that are affected will have no affected children and the only affected children will have an affected mother and that is mitochondrial inheritance